everyone, welcome to Storyteller's Handbook and today we're going to talk about Tech Week. Hey everyone, Joelle Brown here, author, actress, director. I have a BFA in Theatre and Drama Studies from a University Conservatory program and over 10 years experience in theatre. I am also currently writing my debut novel, The Refining. After you've finished your level set, now you're ready for Q to Q. Along with preparing your cue sheet, you also want to prepare a couple of Bibles. Your script with all your cues written in the script is what we call the Bible because it is the most important document in the house of the theater at the time of the show. Your stage manager should always have their own copy from the beginning of the rehearsal process all the way through to strike. Um, and in their binder, they would make note of exactly where they're going to say each cue should stand by and at what point they will say the cue should go. Now what I use, um, you just can just go to a dollar store to get these, are these tiny little circle stickers that are color coded. And so I just pick a color, usually yellow is standby and green is go. And so you wanna put the sticker right on the word you're gonna say standby on and the word you're gonna say go. So that during cue to cue, as the stage manager is figuring the timing out, they can use that sticker, fill in the cue number and the standby number so that they have that record. Now, if your lighting person and your sound person is going to be sitting right beside the stage manager, then the stage manager can communicate with them when they want them to activate the sound cue or activate the lighting cue. If they're not right beside them, then you're going to probably need to rent some walkie talkies or use cell phones, which is less reliable, but it's free. So that's the other option. And they're going to have to communicate with each other when the sound cues need and the lighting cues need to be activated. The other option is to create multiple copies of that Bible so that the sound person, if there's someone somewhere far away and the lighting person is somewhere far away, they both have this copy of the script with their cues clearly marked. So when the show is happening, they are not watching the show. They're looking at their script and reading along and they're listening to this, to the lines so that when they get to that line, they can hit play. They can turn on or turn off, whatever the case may be, unless it's a verbal cue in which you would write in the script, you know, when she stands up, then they would watch with their hand ready and go with the cue. That's something that you need to make sure that you prepare before you get into your performance space. So when you get there, Q to Q, level set, tech rehearsal, dress rehearsal is all very smooth. And something's gonna have to be explained to your actors from the beginning. Tech week is not for them. They have had weeks and months where the rehearsals were focused solely on their choices, their motivations, their obstacles and their objectives. This is not the time for them to ask what their character is thinking and what their character's motivation is. And you need to make that clear to them. Tech week is for the lighting, the sound, the crew, the stage manager, the assistant stage manager, and the director. They are merely props at this point. For Q2Q, Q, you are only running through the parts of the play that have a lighting, a sound, a scene change, or a costume quick change element. Those are the only parts of the play you're running through. If your play only has one lighting cue, for cue to cue, you run through that one lighting cue. If you only have one quick change, you run through that one quick change. If you have 30 lighting cues, you will run through right before, through to right after those 30 lighting cues. So the stage manager will call out to them, go to right before Susie slams the door. They will go in their positions and they will wait until the stage manager cues you, the director, and says, are you ready? Then the stage manager will say, go ahead. They do their scene, Susie slams the door, the lightning flickers, and that was your cue. Now your stage manager will stop them. Stop everyone, thank you very much. And they will ask you, the director, how did that look? And let's say you as the director see it and you're like, no, I want it to be a red flash. The tech team will work on it. The actors will stand, not talking, waiting quietly at your direction. And then they will fix it. They'll say, okay, everyone go back to before Susie slams the door. The actors will scurry, go back to where they were. The director and the stage manager will communicate that you're ready. They'll tell the actors to go ahead and they'll practice the cue again. And they will practice that cue as many times as it takes for the director and the stage manager to be comfortable. Now the director has to like how it looks and how it sounds. The stage manager has to be comfortable calling 
Sometimes the director might be happy with how it looks, but the stage manager needs a couple more times to practice because maybe there's a couple of quick things that they have to call and um, it's a bit tricky. They just want to practice it. You need to give your stage manager that time to practice. That's what it's for. Do not rush them because you don't want them to be uncomfortable when the performance happens. You want them to feel very confident in what they're doing. Now, how does your stage manager call cues? This is not a video on how to be a stage manager. I will do another video on how to stage manage, but just really quickly, you're gonna call cues for lighting by saying stand by LX2 and then LX2 go. Same thing with sound. Stand by sound four, sound four, go. Now that's what the stage manager is practicing because it takes time for the stage manager to understand when to say go, which is like a millisecond delay from the, the technician hearing it. And it might not be a technician, it might be your friend or your cousin, whoever's helping you. It takes them a minute to hear go. It takes a minute then for their brain to tell their finger to press go. It then takes a minute for the technology to actually go and then for us to see it. So the stage manager needs to practice exactly where to time their go so that what happens on stage is what you want as the director. This is the time for you to a lot for your stage manager to become comfortable. It's the time when your lighting person and your sound person will also become comfortable with either pressing a button or operating the laptop or operating the lighting switch or whatever it is. This is their time to go through each cue, cue by cue, to figure it out. Now it's the same thing with quick changes. If there's an actor who only has one scene to change their costume, then you start the actors right before the person leaves the stage, continue the next scene going while they're practicing their changing, continue until they come back on stage. Then you stop and you ask the actor, did you have enough time to change? What were some difficulties? Do you need extra people helping you backstage? Did you not get your wig on in time? Is your lipstick crooked? And then you, you troubleshoot and you figure out how to fix it so that it works and you run that quick change as many times as you need to until the actor's comfortable, until the quick change crew is comfortable, and until it works. Same thing with big set changes. If um, there's a big set change where your crew has to take off a whole bunch of set pieces and put them back on four or five lines before the change happens, let the actors run through the scene, then practice which way are the actors exiting, which way is the crew coming on. You don't want traffic jams when the lights are dimmed for that scene change. When backstage is dark, can the stage crew see where they're walking? Can the actors see where they're walking? Are there bumper cars happening backstage? That can be very dangerous. These are all things you're testing out during your cue to cue. Now, some of the cues that you're gonna set during cue to cue um, that you may be forgetting are your opening, your intermission, and your closing. So right at the beginning of the show, you wanna give your welcome. Maybe explain whether flash photography is prohibited or not. Maybe you'll also announce whether there's gonna be an intermission, whether snacks will be on sale, how long the intermission might be for. If you have any ushers, you can point out the ushers that they can help them. And also at the very end of the show, is there a special song that you want to play for curtain call? That's something that you wanna load in to your sound cues as well. You will have needed to pre-record that before your cue to cue and make sure you load that into your laptop or into the system so that cue is loaded. For your lighting cue, some lighting cues that you don't want to forget for the beginning middle and end of the show at the beginning of the show you have your presets so all of your lights in the house which is where the audience are all those lights are going to be on as well as the stage lights and then as soon as you're ready to start the performance you want to go house to half which is basically your house lights come down 50%. That signals everyone it's time to sit down. If you're somewhere and you can't dim the lights, what you can do is flash the lights. So that's something you just wanna write down on that cue sheet for your lighting person. You're not going straight from house lights on to blackout. People are gonna be stumbling. They're gonna be saying, hey, I can't see and all these craziness. So you're gonna to wanna to go house to half and then all your lights fully out, the house out and the stage out usually in that darkness, or if you wanna only have the stage lights on, then you can decide how you wanna do your announcement. Then the lights will go all the way out and then your stage lights on. For intermission, you wanna program all the house lights coming back on so people can see to get up and use the bathroom and get their snacks. And same thing when intermission is over, you wanna go house to half, then all the way blackout, then the stage lights on. And at the end of the show, of course, you need this house lights to come back on again for everybody to go home. I hope this video was informative for you. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I do new videos. Then consider leaving a comment below about what you learned, what I missed, maybe some of your Tech Week experiences, and what you'd like to see next time. Thanks everyone, see you in the next video.